In our lives, we all have dreams, boys. And my dream as a kid was to be a hockey player. I just couldn't wait to hit the ice with my dog using my old pair of crappy skates to think about maybe one day being just like one of my heroes, like Wayne Gretzky, Steve Iserman. And I always had that dream. I remember I used to sleep with a little puck underneath my pillow thinking that one day maybe I could play for Team Canada or better yet, hoist the Stanley Cup. But all those dreams were shattered, boys, when I found out my dad didn't have enough money to put my sorry butt into hockey. So as a consolation prize, my parents showed up at my bedroom door as I was bawling my brains out with NHL hockey for the Sega Genesis, and they said, you know what? Since you can't play real hockey, you can play the video game and actually play for the Stanley Cup. I cried for days, but after popping this game in, the feeling of not having the opportunity to play real hockey slowly faded away as I got into NHL hockey. And in this episode of Games We Love, we are looking at NHL hockey, the original for the Genesis. Now, in this version, you couldn't play a regular season. You could only play the playoffs. The regular season was just an exhibition mode, but you could actually go, the cool thing is you could go head to head or play with your teammate if you had a little brother or something like that. But uh, the, the playoffs were actually, you could do a one game knockout elimination or a best of seven. And you could do the whole penalties thing. But did anyone ever put on line changes back then? When being kids, we didn't want to deal with switching lines and the guys getting tired. We never played with line changes, and we did put penalties on. They didn't have offsides. I think they did have offsides. That was the option, but we didn't play with offsides. Now, this game was great because before this, they only had, like, ice hockey for the Nintendo. And this game had great sound effects. I love it. Listen to this. The roar of the crowd. Here's Suter. Just so you guys know, I loved playing with Calgary because that was my brother's favorite team growing up. Look at, oh, hitting it off the post was awesome. Did you hear that, boys? Here's another um, little um, segment here of getting it off the post. <laughs> Every time you hit it off the post, the fans go crazy. And if you hit it off twice off the post, it, it sounds like a remix. Listen to this. <laughs> da, da, da. But this game was fun because, like I said, before they had Blades of Steel and Ice Hockey, and it didn't have that stick handling ability that this game has. And it just was awesome how, when we were kids, my brother and I, we used to have tournaments and we used to set up the posters in those 80s basements, boys, and, um, and log the stats of of all the games that we um, we took part in and then I remember we even made our own little trophy to give to uh, whoever won the tournament but boys the whole tournament wins were never by me it was older but always by my older brother who would always find a way to win and um, speaking of uh, winning fights boys it was always fun to lay the fist of cuffs on somebody and and that was great Another cool feature when you play with the playoffs, as I'm just rambling on, you could actually check in on highlights of in-game series of the other teams. And it was kind of cool how you could just go through and see the final game. Every game seemed to be tight in the playoffs when you would play. But it's so funny, every time you would see a highlight, every shot that would be taken in the highlight would go in as a goal. So look at this. Look at Cam Neely. Neely loses it, and if you see them going in for the offensive rush, you know it's going to go in if they shoot it, and they score. Every single time. So let's see the next highlight. The goalie can never make a save. Oh, it's in overtime. Neely scores! Speaking of talking about the game, we would always love commentating. Because they didn't have commentating. Look at this. Robitaille. Oh, he's doing a spinorama. Robitaille looking. Oh, he loses it. Who's 25 on San Jose? Let's just call him Johnson to number 11. Number 11 looking. Remember, the goalie can't make a save in the highlights. Oh, the post saves it. Oh, but Falloon scores. I know number 17 was Falloon. The thing is, they didn't have the, um, the rights for the players back then. As you see, my beloved Leafs. Is that Francis Schetti to Daniel Merwa? 
But um, they didn't have the rights, so they did have the correct numbers of the players that you know, but it would never say who those players were until the following version. Oh, man. Swiss cheese as the goalie lets that in. But the following version, like I said, look at Brett Hall there. They had the names displayed. But you knew, if you were a hardcore hockey fan, you knew that that's Dave L at number four. Franceschetti, I think that's Franceschetti. Who's number 10? Lowry and to Oates in there. There you go. Now, just to close off this whole thing, look at, this is the end of my playoffs. And I'm about to win the Stanley Cup. And look at it. Flurry hoisting the Stanley Cup as they beat Montreal. And the Calgary Flames are the Stanley Cup champions. You know what's cool about this version? This was the year that the San Jose Sharks kind of, um, they came into the league. And if you won with the Sharks, it would say, the fierce fish have won the cup. Um, but... As a whole, this game was great. Let me know your thoughts uh, if you guys played this back in the day. Or if you haven't and then you played it later. It's just an excellent start to a great franchise. And every time I hear the music of this game, I go nuts because it brings back great childhood memories. Let me know, boys. Thanks for stopping by. You made my day. Ain't gonna lie. If you haven't yet, please share, like, and subscribe. And come and join the Hank Gaming Tribe. See you later. Happy New Year. Big Daddy.